According to a report from Variety, six of the seven biggest Hollywood studios are continuing to push to offer movies at home weeks after their theatrical debuts, with a new $30 price rental on the table. Of the major studios, Fox and Warner Brothers are showing the most flexibility about the release window, with Fox and even Universal both feeling that the $50 price tag is too steep a price to ask consumers to pay. Lionsgate, Paramount, and Sony have also been in discussions with AMC, Regal, and Cineplex about a possible home video deal, though details are still developing. Of all the studios, however, Disney is the only one not interested in shortening the release window because their slates include animated Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars, which all tend to have long runs in theaters. Parami, par, parami. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> no! It is official. The cat is out of the bag, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Stamp of approval. All right. Uh, Harry, <laughs> what do you think? What's that? You guys just going to answer everything together now? I don't even yeah. know who she threw it to. <laughs> Uh, one of you. Oh my God, Harry, this one's for you. Wow, well, I couldn't plan that any better. Um, well, in all seriousness, this is a, a pretty interesting and major story. <laughs> really, we knew that this kind of stuff was going to happen. This isn't a new story by any means. This is something that everybody's been talking about for years. These kinds of plans have been trying to be worked out for so long, and. It's inevitable with the rise of streaming services and how dependent we all are on them, and especially with younger generations. I mean, before we know it, younger generations are going to be the large majority of the movie-going population. They need their movies whenever they want, wherever they want, and these are the ways to do it and the ways to make money. What fascinates me most about this story is the point where it says, um, because of certain laws... All the studios aren't allowed to come together and say, you know, it'll be best for, let's make this all neat and organized. It'll be best for everybody if we have this window for this price. Everyone has to negotiate on their own with the different theater chains. So that means we're probably going to end up in a different situation with every single studio. And when you're comparing all these major motion pictures that are warring at the box office, that's kind of going to change the game with, with box office competition going forward. So, you know, this, this one article mentioned that no deal is imminent. So it's not like we're going to come back next week with a report saying this is how it's going to go from here on out. But these are going to be ongoing negotiations, and one day they are going to come to an end, and we're going to get major releases on streaming services, on VOD. So, Ellis, what do you think? Well, uh, pair me. It's nice for you guys because you each only have to pay $15 per movie. And it's great news for one Dennis Zen because I, I have dropped your ticket price. When you come over to my apartment, it's not going to cost you as much money. You're welcome. $10 for Dennis, 5 for everybody else. Um, I think that uh, this is... It's just weird to be in this day and age, isn't it? It's like you never thought that you that you would see a time when you can get new release first run movies in your home that quickly, which by the way, that's one of the greatest graphics that Ray has ever put together. <laughs> yeah. That is fantastic. A nice Norman Rockwell family watching a guy put claws through somebody's head. I am all for this. I really am. I understand the apprehension by studios, particularly Disney, because their movies make the most money at the box office, and people want to go see those in theaters up to two months after their initial release. So studios can want to cash in on this. Theater chains should read this and be rightfully so very nervous. But I wonder if that actually is going to boost box office for the first couple weeks because you better see this movie in theaters or else it's not going to, it's not going to be around that long. Because theater chains, they're just going to keep putting <coughs> newer movies on more screens. Because if you can go see Logan at home now, why would you still have it in three theaters when maybe you put it in one theater and you make room for other films? One of the most interesting points in this that I actually really liked was that maybe the rule should be when a movie dips below a certain amount of screens, that's when it should enter this kind of this kind of realm. Schnepp, one, what do you think about this story? And two, how much are you going to charge Dennis if he wants to come watch a movie at your place? <laughs> Dennis, because I get a ride with him every morning, it's only three dollars and fifteen cents. So plus a dollar for the bathroom. Well, a dollar for the bathroom, and and then an Ellis surcharge if he brings Ellis is thirty eight dollars. So just how it works. Just how it works. Choke on your aspiration, son. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a fun conversation earlier. Ma Bell is why their 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 companies aren't allowed to you know, talk to each other. Otherwise you get this giant creature that's gonna overcharge all of us. So I think, you know, with what you're talking about, I can easily see in the next year or so, Disney releasing a Star Wars movie and then a month and a half later, releasing it for VOD for 50 bucks. While another company, it's like say Universal, releases theirs after 30 days and charges $20. Because 
Disney is, knows that, like, look, we're getting, we've got the whole family wants to see it. They're going to make a big night out of it. Fifty bucks is a steal for not having to go to the theater. You know, I, I don't think it's going to really replace movies because people love to go see these giant, big blockbuster films in giant theaters. But, you know, if you have your own giant home theater, then maybe you'll want to rock that and invite all of us. So, you know. Jeremy, what do you got? Yeah, it's a, uh, there have been companies, uh, theater companies, theater chains, and studios that have been in this war before, right? Pretty recently, I forgot the movie, but there was a movie where uh, they wanted to release it digitally. It what, was, do you remember? It was Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse yes. and also Paranormal Activity Ghost Dimension. That's why I couldn't see it. I think it was Regal Cinemas was like, well, screw you. We're not going to show your movie. And so movie theaters do have that. It's essentially the same as any strike where it's like, oh, you're going to do that to us? Well, we don't have to show your movie. Then you're going to lose money. And and that's where it's really dipped off, and we, we never really heard about it uh, since then. But if more studios are getting behind this, then that will... I mean, movie theaters can't just be like, well, we're not going to show any of your films. Disney would be fine with that. They're like, well, I guess all those screens go to Star Wars, Marvel, what Disney animations, whatever you want to do. Um, but... I think uh, Roger Ebert a while ago hypothesized this coming one day. He was like, one day, movie like home entertainment will be where movies are released. People will go to the theaters for a different experience. It'll be more old school. It'll have the balconies, the red curtains. You know, it'll it'll be the whole works with digital uh, medium. You can do a lot more than just show movies. So I wonder if you know. Imagine a theater that's like we're going to stream all of. The, the Stranger Things 2, you know, for like 10 hours, you can watch Stranger Things 2. I don't know, a lot of people would probably pay for that, so maybe that's where they'll make their money if they can work something out with streaming services, who knows? But uh, yeah, it is a, it is a nerve-wracking thing for movie theater companies, I would think. And as someone who likes going to the theater, th there's nothing you can't watch. You feel like you feel like that family right there with the shittiest resolution television ever <laughs> conceived by man <laughs> watching Logan. It's I, I like going to a theater. I was actually in uh, in Washington when I got my house. One of my things was like I want a theater room mm -hmm. so I could still have that. And uh, but not everyone does that, you know. So there will still be people who go to movie theaters. Uh, not as many as who people who would be okay staying home and just watching it 30 days later. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's a very, it's, it's a nerve wracking change of time, but I feel like this is the inevitable outcome. We would always end here. So we'll see what happens. I hope theaters stick around because, hey, that was always my escape in high school. But you're high right, school I mean, fun. Home theater technology has improved to the point yeah. where it's also cost effective for families to actually get a giant TV that's great resolution. You can get a 4K TV. It's no longer the richest kid with a leather jacket on the block now that can watch this kind of stuff. Everybody has access, or most people have access, to a nice home theater experience that is not obviously as big as going to see a movie, but if you can stay home, I like staying home a lot. If I I am like working at AMC or Regal. I'm not panicking just yet, but this story makes me raise an eyebrow, and I'm going to be very nice to the good people at Disney and do whatever they want because that's the last shoe to drop. I, I can see Disney offering their own box at home, like the Disney box where you can get Pixar movies and Star Wars movies separate. Why would Disney want to pair up with Universal and Fox when they don't have to? Because even if all these other companies are like, yeah, you can stream our movies right away, Disney's like, well, yeah, but you're not making The Avengers. It's not like Paramount is suddenly going to make Beauty and the Beast. You know, Disney has the rights to all these properties that people want to go see. So we're still going to be going to the theater for a long time. We're not choking on our own ambition just yet. <laughs>